A hurricane has again destroyed parts of Florida and a different tragedy has been unfolding for weeks. Sea surface temperatures in the Florida Keys have topped 37 degrees Celsius, killing corals. If you think about your own body, if your body temperature goes up by just a degree or two Fahrenheit, you're in a, a sick state. I thought my grandchildren may have problems, but it's here today. What most people don't realize is they're animals. They're animals that need to be taken care of. Activists from the Coral Restoration Foundation check on the health of the coral reefs near the Keys several times a week. The archipelago of the southern tip of Florida is known worldwide for its spectacular marine habitats. Bailey Thomason is one of the foundation's coordinators and is leading today's expedition. These reefs are millions of years old. A lot of the corals that we're seeing here today that are these really big uh, bouldering corals are are 500 to 1,000 years old, and they take a really long time to grow. These animals are hundreds and hundreds of years old, and they can, they can die in a matter of days or weeks. Rising temperatures cause coral bleaching all the time, but this year, the situation has been particularly bad. Because it was so hot so early, the bleaching period has been extended. Many corals will have died off by the time water temperatures drop again. Coral reefs are one of the most vital and biodiverse ecosystems that we have on this planet. They cover less than 1% of the entire ocean floor, yet they support over 25% of all marine species. So whether or not you live on the coast, coral reefs affect you. Corals themselves are responsible for one in 10 breaths that we take. The animal, the, the algae that lives inside of the corals photosynthesizes and, and produces oxygen for us. So they are just as important for us as trees and so the loss of this ecosystem is going to have profound effects. So protecting what we have is really vital because there's not a lot of it. The, the water temperature is just under 90 degrees Fahrenheit um, and, and it feels like a bathtub to us humans. The problem with this is, is, is that if you kind of think about humans when we get a fever um, a lot of people are like oh you know it's just a couple of degrees how can that be so dangerous for the corals uh, but the thing about it is if you think about your own body if your body temperature goes up by just a degree or two Fahrenheit you're in a, a sick state the scientists next diving stop is about 20 minutes away they are here to check on a coral nursery so what we're doing today is taking a lot of monitoring data. Um, we have different genotypes and genetic strains of these species here in this nursery. So we're trying to learn more uh, in, and get more insight into which genetic strains might respond better to thermal stress, which ones might respond worse. When cultured corals reach a certain size, they're normally transplanted into damaged reefs. But this year, few of the corals are healthy enough to allow for the procedure. It's uh, really heartbreaking to see this. Uh, our team has poured our hearts and soul into building this nursery up over the last two years. Um, this was this is our newest nursery, kind of our baby, our, our little our project, and we've been so proud of it and so excited for it. And it was going to make our operations, um, you know, really really smooth. Blue Key Reef. We were hoping to plant these corals there next year. It's um, you know really heartbreaking to see years and years of work be derailed in the matter of a few days. We drive to the small city of Marathon in the middle of the Keys to attend a city council meeting. Sarah Fanmeng from the US Oceanographic Administration has invited residents to discuss what, if anything, can be done about the coral die-off caused both by climate change and the El Nino weather phenomenon. Emotions run high at the meeting, attended by fishermen, store owners and members of the Coast Guard. This isn't the first time, but it's this, this is bad. I mean, if you look at the numbers that Sarah showed, this is off the charts weird. We can all pray for rain. I think that's rain and, and maybe even a that little dance with the devil or a hurricane. It's 
it's a very divided, you know, just like COVID was a divided issue, just like our country is divided right now. This is coming faster than I think any of us ever thought. I thought my grandchildren may have problems, but it's here today. Sarah Fangman has been monitoring the health of the coral reefs in the Keys for many years. Our organisms can adapt to change if that change happens over the right amount of time. But what's happening with this event and with the temperatures of our oceans increasing so fast, the corals can't adapt quickly enough. And so that's a problem. What most people don't realize is they're animals. They're animals that need to be taken care of. And right now those animals are struggling. They are under stress from all of this heat. Change happens on our planet, absolutely. But it doesn't happen this fast without us having a hand in that change. And we need to have a hand in changing it back. We need to stop what is happening that is causing this level of stress and, and impacts to our precious reefs. At the end of the archipelago lies Key West. The city at the southernmost point of the United States is a liberal bubble in an otherwise more conservative Florida. Since the 80s, it has attracted artists and dropouts and is home to a vibrant LGBTQ community. Since 2018, the city has been run by its first openly lesbian mayor. Terry Johnson is known for her fight against climate change. So much of our economy is based around diving, fishing, uh, recreational boating, things of that nature, and it's, it really is our, our lifeblood. It's, a, it's an economic engine for the city of Key West, and it's, it's very important to all of us. You know, it makes you realize how short-sighted we have been and how, you know, these are, these are resources that once they go away, many times they don't come back. But what can the mayor actually hope to change in a state headed by Governor Ron DeSantis? We, we have a very controversial governor. He has preempted most of the things. We banned all sunscreens with oxybenzoin and oxynoctate because they have both been found to kill our coral reef. So we put through that resolution and within a month we were preempted by Tallahassee. And they said, you can't do that. You're hurting Johnson & Johnson. You're hurting the big sunscreen manufacturers. And we said, yes, but there, there are 50 other manufacturers that, that, that manufacture safe sunscreen. But I mean, that's, that's the type of thing that we combat every single day. Ron DeSantis is not just any governor. In today's divided America, he's currently the number two Republican presidential candidate behind Donald Trump. He has steadfastly denied the reality of climate change, even as parts of his state experienced a powerful storm this year and were devastated by Hurricane Ian in 2022. People try to say when we had Ian that it was because of climate change, but if you look at the first 60 years uh, uh, from 1900 to 1960, we had more major hurricanes hit Florida than in the 60 years since then. Uh, this is something that's a fact of life. Uh, in the Sunshine State. Uh, I've always rejected the politicization uh, of the weather. What do the people who live in the Keys think of this assessment? We ask Will Benson, a local fisherman. Our problems are political. We have, we know the science has the answers. I, I, I'm a firm believer in science. Uh, I think the science can provide the answers, the solutions, technology. It's my wish would be that we could all look at each other with a little bit more respect and understanding. It's a sentiment echoed by local businesswoman Sofia Rusikova. It's just basically in, in ignorance when it comes to that. I think a lot of that is lack of education. People don't know the impact that they're creating on the environment. The persistent heat is also threatening Florida's once thriving sea turtle population. The Turtle Hospital in Marathon has been working around the clock to help injured or sick animals. People who find distressed turtles inform the team, which picks up the reptiles and takes them in. Chrissy Watts has worked at the hospital for more than 10 years. They're a very young turtle. They're kind of like a toddler. They don't have that immune system built up yet. So when they start feeding on toxic grass beds, swimming in toxic water, uh, it just the stress factors brings down their immune system and the tumors seem to come out. Uh, the tumors are growths that grow around the turtle's uh, soft shell or skin and um, they grow really big and we uh, remove them with a CO2 laser. 
each turtle can go through multiple surgeries. Uh, as long as the tumor's on the outside, we can usually help the turtles. Unfortunately, the tumor's on the inside. There's not a lot you can always do for the turtles. They can be with us for a couple months as we are, you know, removing the tumors and they're going through the care of recovery. And they have no regrowth for a couple months, then we return them back to the ocean. The high temperatures not only increase the turtle's risk of cancer, but even affect the animals before they are born. Here we have some hatchlings. You can have both species in the nest, but a warmer temperature nest is going to produce more female, and a cooler temperature nest is going to produce more male. So we call it hot chicks and cool dudes is a way to remember it. So if we're having really hot temperatures, that whole nest is going to be full of females. Um, also, sometimes the nest won't even hatch. It's like the eggs are getting cooked, so it's almost like a poached egg in the, in the nest. We head out to sea again with Bailey and her team the next day. This time, the activists are not collecting data, but are trying to save the corals that are still alive before they die off too. So when we're pulling these corals out, uh, we did it from our nurseries, uh, through, through all of the nurseries throughout the Keys. And so we just cut those corals off of the coral trees that we have, put them into crates. From there, they are placed in large containers brought ashore to be housed in cold storage facilities. Hopefully we can hold them there for the rest of the summer, but the goal is to bring them back to our nursery setting at the end of the summer once temperatures cool down. They are so stressed, and between the bleaching and the temperature and the transport to there, um, they probably don't have much energy to be able to grow. It's probably gonna, gonna be a survival thing for the next three months until we can get them back in the ocean. Bailey and her team will continue their work in the reefs until then, doing everything they can to save as many corals as possible. But they know no one will be able to stop the destruction of this fragile ecosystem if our planet continues to heat up so quickly.